Now let's talk about one of the cooler phenomena that exists, multifetal gestations. You've got twins, you've got triplets. On a rare day, you may even see quads. And what better place to talk about multiple buns in the oven than a bakery? For the sake of simplicity, we'll use twin gestations as the basis for all of our examples here. But know that all of the following concepts can be applied to higher order multifetal gestations. When you hear twins, what's the first thing you usually ask? Whether or not they're identical. But what does this actually mean? Well, identical appearances come from identical genetic material, which has to do with zygosity. Zygosity refers to the number of zygotes initially involved. A zygote consists of two gametes, specifically an egg and a sperm, which is why there's two punched in holes in this dough ball that looks suspiciously like pronuclei. A dizygotic pregnancy is when the mother ovulates two eggs, symbolized conveniently by these two eggs, which are then fertilized by two separate sperm, symbolized by these two sperm-looking spoons. Ta-da! Two zygotes. Each zygote is genetically distinct from the other, so these types of twins are colloquially referred to as fraternal twins. Monozygotic multiples happen after one fertilized egg divides into, usually, two embryos. This means that the resulting fetuses are genetically identical. But wait, how about the placenta? Is there one big one? Two separate ones? Well, all of this depends on when the division of the zygote occurs. The fancy word for this is chorionicity, and it refers to the number of placentas. We'll represent placentas with these big round baking trays, because you can't bake bread without them. Before we go into more detail, you should know one more term, which is amnionicity. Amnionicity refers to the number of amniotic sacs, represented by the saran wrap that covers the buns. What combination of chorionicity and amnionicity you get depends on the zygosity as well as when the division happens. In general, the further the division is from the fertilization event, the more the fetuses share. Dichorionic diamniotic pregnancies have two placentas and two amniotic sacs. They're usually dizygotic. However, if they happen to be monozygotic, Division must happen within three days of fertilization in order for it to have two placentas and two amniotic sacs. That's why the rising timer next to the two buns on two separate baking trays underneath individual saran wraps is set to three hours. Monochorionic diamniotic pregnancies, also known as monodigestations, occur when division happens between four to eight days after fertilization, so this timer is set to eight hours. In this type of pregnancy, the fetuses share one large placenta, but they're each in their own amniotic sac, exactly how these buns are on the second shelf. Monochorionic monoamniotic, or mono-mono, or momo pregnancies occur when division happens between 8 and 12 days after fertilization. These fetuses have to learn how to share early. They share both a placenta and an amniotic sac, just like these buns on the third shelf. Mono-mono twins have a much higher mortality rate due to the risk of umbilical cord entanglement between fetuses since there's no amniotic membrane separating the two. That's why there's a red warning sign on this proofing shelf. If division of the zygote happens at 13 days or later, this is when you get conjoined twins. That's why this piece of dough next to the 13-hour timer is only partially separated.